This is unit one functions and today we're starting with day one domain and range. What you're going to see me do is you're going to see me graphing these functions, determining their domain and range. What's going to be new here is these domain restrictions that you're going to see and that's going to help you with understanding piecewise defined functions once we get there. I'm going to start out with example one here. I'm going to go ahead and graph the line one half x minus four. That's a math one review really. Um, and we're going to then apply this domain restriction that's sitting out here. Um, to graph 1 half x minus 4, I'll start with the minus 4, which is the y-intercept. So at 0, negative 4, that's one of my points. Now I'm going to rise 1 and run 2. And uh, if you don't understand what I'm doing here in graphing this line, you are a little bit behind, and you need to be seeing me during my smart lunch tutoring, please. I'm going to get that to be a solid line, my mistake. All right, here we go. So now here's my uh, my line, uh, and I can see all the points that are on it. What I'm going to do though is apply this domain restriction because not th this entire line is not meeting this condition. It says the only x values I can have are less than two. Now the x values that are less than two are going to be right here and to the left. So going to where x is two. I'm going to cut my function off, and I'm going to get rid of everything to the right of it because the x values have to be less than 2. So I'm going to erase all of this stuff out here. Now as far as the 2 goes, it cannot equal 2. It said less than 2, not less than or equal to. So at the 2, I'm actually going to erase it and put an open circle there. Now. I have a corrected graph and, we'll, and it does continue going down into the left for forever. This is what the function should look like for this domain restriction. Um, now I'm going to state my domain and range and we're going to use set notation for that. So for my domain, it's, it was actually provided right here. X such that X is less than 2. X such that X is less than 2. You did see this vertical line, it, said it meant given that uh, in probability. Um, so you could think of x given that x is less than 2, uh, kind of means the same thing as far as set notation goes. Now we're going to state our range, our f of x values that this thing can be. So the f of x values looking at this axis, it doesn't exist everywhere along this axis. It starts at negative 3 and then goes down from there is where it exists. So it's going to be anything less than negative 3. It's not equal to negative 3 due to this being an open circle. So f of x, given that f of x is less than negative 3. And there's my domain and range for this function. For example, do on, example two, I'm doing exactly the same kind of problem. Uh, so no difference in problem number one, just different values and the like. Um, go and go ahead and graph the line really quick. And the uh, line is negative x minus one. So I'm going to start negative one for a y-intercept. And since it's negative one for my slope, I'm going to go down one over one. And I can go ahead and get this line graphed out now. Uh, again, I'm not going to use all of this. What I'm, the part I'm going to use is anything where x is greater than or equal to 2. Um, so if I go on the x-axis where x is 2, that's going to show me wh where I need to be cutting this graph off at, here at 2, negative 3. Um, that's a coincidence that's at 2, negative 3 again. Um, now I'm going to cut it off there. Since it needs to be x values greater than or equal to 2, I'm going to keep everything to the right. I'm going to get rid of everything to the left. So I'm going to cut it off here and get rid of all this to the left of it. That's no longer part of my graph. As far as where 2, negative 3 is, I'm going to use a filled in circle this time. And the reason is because it was equal to 2 in my domain restriction. So 2, negative 3 is a part of my graph, where on the previous problem it was not a part of my graph. So I've got points like 2, negative 3, 
um, 3, negative 4, 4, negative 5, and so on for forever. Now I'm going to state the domain and range for this problem. For my domain, again, these are kind of convenient since they actually give you the domain in the problem. So there that is. For my range, uh, f of x values, again, these f of x values don't start until negative 3. It starts right there. And then it goes down from there. So anything less than or equal to negative 3 this time because it was a filled in circle. f of x such that f of x is less than or equal to negative 3. And this is my domain and range. Now you can see a note that you need to include here. A function that is written using two or more expressions is a piecewise defined function. Uh, if you'll uh, look back with me really quick, this only had one expression, negative x minus 1, for graphing it. So did the previous one. It only had one expression. But now when I scroll back down here, I'm going to have two or more expressions. I'm going to have to graph x minus 1. I'm also going to have to graph negative 1 in order to get this one completed. Okay, so let's treat them as two separate problems, starting with the x minus 1. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to negative 1 for my y-intercept, and then my slope is 1, so I'm going to rise 1, run 1, and now I can graph that line. Okay, let's take a look at where we're supposed to cut this thing off at. It says we're going to keep x values less than or equal to 3. So I'm going to go out to where x is 3, and then go up to where my function is. I'm going to cut it off right here. I'm going to keep all values to the left because it said x values less than or equal to 3. So at 3, I'm going to cut it off, keep everything to the left, get rid of everything to the right. Now here, I'm going to use a filled in circle because it said less than or equal to 3. Um, that finishes the first part the first piece of the graph. Now I need to graph out 0x minus 1 for x is greater than 3. Excuse me. Sorry about the interruption there. So if you actually graph out 0x minus 1 because there's no x value, that's going to have a slope of 0 and a y-intercept of negative 1. And I'll use a uh, different color here. So I'm going to use green to start out with my y-intercept negative 1, then we'll go rise 0, one, run 1, and there I have it. And that green line I just made is the uh, line 0x minus 1. But I'm going to cut it off at 3 and uh, keep everything greater than 3. So whenever I look at that, I'm going to where x is 3, I'm going to cut it off right here at 3, negative 1. And again, because it says x is greater than 3, I'm going to keep everything to the right. I'm going to get rid of everything that was to the left of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and use an open circle on this one because it said greater than. It didn't say greater than or equal to. Uh, this completes my graph here. Um, so I can see points that are included are along this line, stopping right here at 3, 2. It does include 3, 2. Then it goes to here and uh, picks up at 3, negative 1, not including that point, but everything to the right of it and just staying at 0 for eternity. All right, so for domain and range, I said domain, you always refer to the what they tell you, but if you join these two, x is less than or equal to 3 or x is greater than 3, well, that's actually just all real numbers. Any number meets that condition. So for my domain, I'm just going to say the set of all real numbers. Uh, for my range, what I'm going to say is that as I look along this axis, I notice that all the values up here at 3, 4, and 5, the function doesn't exist. Then it exists at 2 with a filled-in circle, and it, fill, and it does exist for anything below that, so anything less than or equal to 2. If you're worried about this, this would be equal to negative 1. But if I write the f of x as anything less than or equal to 2, that would include the negative 1 that you see right here. So I don't need to separately say that. So I'm going to say f of x such that f of x is any value less than or equal to 2. And again, equal to because it was a filled in circle at that value. Um, this completes this problem. Take a look over the homework. On those, you'll have three pieces thrown in. 
which is just fine. Just take your time with them and let me know any questions that you got tomorrow.